All right, joining me now is the editor in chief of the one and the only Babylon B. It is Kyle Mann. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Faithwire. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? Good, good. Um, I'm I'm really obsessed with this this fascination, this obsession that CNN seems to have with you guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I just shake my head every time. It, it just seems like satire itself that these the Snopes of the world. And these fact checkers are just determined to try to, you know, fact check you guys, I guess, which is so bizarre because inherently you're a satire site. There should be no reason to do that at all. What's your, what, first of all, what's your reaction to that? I want to go through the latest one here real quick. But what's your overall reaction to what CNN and Snopes and all the rest are doing to you guys? Yeah, I mean, we've never actually objected to, in general, the concept that some people might be tricked yeah. By satire, and that maybe there's a need for someone to say, "Hey, wait a minute, this is false," you know. And I, I, we've never we've never objected to that concept because that makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, ever it since happens. satire, ever since satire has been written, people have been uh, people misunderstand it, you know. And that's happened since it's been written, and that will happen for you know hundreds of years in the future, as long as satire is being written. <laughs> Yeah. There will be someone out there who will be confused by it. <laughs> uh, and so we, we've never really objected to that uh, concept per se. The problem is when a lot of um, when a lot of these sites like Snopes and AP's fact checker and Facebook's, you know, whatever independent fact checkers they end up using. And then CNN recently kind of jumping into the fray and, and commenting on the Babylon Bee. Uh, whenever they do it, it, it always seems like uh they assign sinister motives to our particular brand of satire. Right. Like, because we're making fun of the left, there must be something wrong with this. It must be fake news. You know, there's always this implication that what we're doing is intentionally deceiving people, which isn't the case. Right. Yeah. And that, I mean, I think the initial push to sort of, you know, combat and attack fake news are these sites that are like literally trying to fake. And like they, they, they just, they're like news channel eight, 1.7 and then they write like a news story and there's no like jokes in it at all and there's no attempted humor it's just like a straight news story that i can understand them saying like hey that's actual fake news because who the heck knows what the but you guys i mean you your site is cle it's clearly set up as a satire site i mean the babylon b number one yeah, right. i mean the name. <laughs> the name and the logo is a bumblebee i mean i i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand how they could fall for that um, but I can see the difference there. But I mean, don't you find it a little absurd that they, you know, I, I get you're giving them the, the leeway there, but it's a little absurd that they think, you know, that people could be. I mean, do you find that people get confused a lot by your articles? Do you see that in your own comments? I mean, you, not not typically in our comments. Like if we share a post, people who follow us get it. Yeah. Right. The people who get uh, deceived by a, a Babylon Bee article are people are, are when that article gets shared outside of our circles, yeah. you know. Um, and this is a problem with internet satire because of the way that news and information is is spread on the internet. Back in the day, if you subscribed to the old Wittenberg Door, you know, which was a print Christian satire magazine in the 70s and 80s and 90s, uh, you you subscribed to it because you liked humor and satire, and you knew it was humor and satire. And the chances that your grandma was going to come across it and get confused were very low, you know. <laughs> right. But now you share it on Facebook and yeah. people who aren't in that target audience, you know, kind of kind of can get uh, get deceived. And, you know, obviously not something we're intending to do, but it's right. something that can happen. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously just on its face. And, and that's what Snopes and these people should do if, when, if they were to do a fact check is say, it's the Babylon Bee. It's satire. It's right. obviously satire. They should just hand wave it away if they feel the need to fact check something like this. And the yeah. problem is they don't. They start to editorialize and say that we're, you know, uh, we're trying to deceive people. We're fake news or they'll put satire in quotes or humor in quotes like we're yeah. <laughs> doing something <laughs> uh, sinister. Right. Whereas if they cover the onion or something like that, they kind of are along with the joke, right? And like, ha ha, yeah, right. it's a joke. You're, you're an idiot for, for missing it. Exactly. Um, exactly. So here, I'll just go over the one you tweeted. I saw you tweet earlier today. Um, you said another CNN reporter accusing the Babylon Bee of being insidious, fake satire. So obviously your tweet there is, is to what you're just speaking about. Um, but, uh, it was Donnie O'Sullivan, uh, who I've never heard of, but having a, is apparently with CNN, 
having a disclaimer buried somewhere on your site that it says that says it's satire seems like a good way to get around a lot of changes Facebook has uh, made to reduce the spread of clickbait and misinformation. So, what's your what's your reaction there to little Donnie? Yeah, and just again on its face, like any reasonable person navigates to babylonbee.com, and you know the featured story on our site all weekend was. <laughs> That uh, that the Pope, uh, the the Pope slapped that woman, and she ended up cutting off her hand and selling it on eBay for one point three billion dollars. You know, there's <laughs> there's a huge banner on top of our site, right? And and there's equally absurd and ridiculous stories all over. Uh, we we clearly say we're satire in our Twitter bio, in our Facebook bio, in our About Us page. Uh, you know, our cover image is. A, a collage of uh, of Larry Boy and Kirk Cameron and Bible Man and Salty the Songbook and this gritty reboot. It's like <laughs> if if I were going to create a site that would try to trick people, this is not how I would do it. Right? I would do that. I think you said it earlier, but I would call it you know Internet Real News twenty four seven dot com or something. That's that's what the fake news sites do, you right. know, and that's kind of uh, quite obviously that's not our intent. Um, yeah. And, um, I thought we could spend a couple minutes here, Kyle, um, just going through, maybe we could do maybe a bit of a public service, uh, to CNN sure. and to Snopes and to, to anyone else who maybe has a hard time discerning fake news from real news. Maybe we could just go through a couple of your headlines and sort of help them, uh, figure out, you know, how to break it down so that they can go, Oh, th this is fake news. So, uh, are you up for that? Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Okay, let's do it. All right, so here we go. This is a couple of your more recent stories that, that I just, I'm up on the website now, babylonb.com. And uh, it says, White House hires Mandalorian to protect baby Trump from Iranian bounty hunters. Ar Iran's in the news. Trump's in the news right now. So what am I, how, how can I know if this is fake or real? Uh, well, that's a tough one. You know, you started right out of the gate with one of those that's right on the border. Right on the line, yeah. Yeah, satire and fake news because you don't really know. I mean, maybe maybe the Mandalorian really did come to protect baby Trump. It's totally a possibility now. Right, uh, and the feature image. Before you go any further, the feature image. I mean, totally real. I mean, it's just it's a baby Trump with arms up, and uh, the Mandalorian there. Right. So I mean, looks very credible. Yeah, and that's part of the problem is we don't Photoshop anything. You know, we just take pictures. So this is just a right. straight informational uh, picture that we took. The first clue you can look at, though, is that, um, you know, the Mandalorian, according to Wikipedia, is a fictional character mm. from a television show on Disney+. Plus. So that may be an indication. If you see something like that where there's a fictional character involved, it's probably not true. Right. Uh, another thing you can look at is the fact that Trump um, is not a baby. That's so. You that's know, true. That's true. Didn't think. I didn't think of that. I mean, that's see. This is it, why. This is why this is a good service here. I, I would never have thought. And again, I I googled it, and it doesn't seem like you can turn from a seventy year old man into a into a baby. Um, it seems like it usually the aging process works the other way. Yeah. So it it seems unlikely that this particular story is true. So I'm going to have to go uh, go ahead and go with the fact with, check. Uh, yeah. Mostly false on this one. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even though Benjamin Button was a movie, and you know, I think Brad Pitt. I didn't watch it, but that's I think true. Brad again, Pitt again, got that's younger. Fic fictional, right? So you have to. That's fictional, right? You have movie. to. Uh, yeah, you have to. Yeah. Do. So I think that's good. Those are some good tips there um, mm -hmm. to find out. You know, I, I wouldn't have known, but now I know. So now, hopefully, these will give you some helpful tips to go through. How about uh, this one? Iran declines to sign Colin Kaepernick after reviewing workout video. Now, Colin Kaepernick got you know offered a workout for the NFL. Uh, and it didn't work out for him. So how do we know that Iran declined it? Uh, well, this is a tough one because this one's actually true. That, that, that is true. So, yeah. He's not actually uh, yeah, signed so this, by Iran. So, wow. Again, you guys see this is I can see why Snopes weird. wants to be on you guys because you're right there. Right yeah, there on the, the line. Problem. It's, yeah, we do some satire and some that's just a prediction. It's more of a prophecy. And <laughs> right. so when it comes true, then it then it just becomes true news. So, yeah, that one's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Let's go through one more here. I'm going to uh, let's see. I'm, gonna, I'm on the site now. OK, here we go. Um, 
this one. Now, this one has a very visceral feature image here. Uh, it's Joel Osteen following through uh, after, after apparently, I'll just read the headline. Joel Osteen criticized after slapping woman who tried to quote Bible verse to him. So again, what, what should we yeah. do as the, as the reader here? What can, what are some steps I can take here, you know, to, well, to know for sure. This one takes a little bit of research, but you, if you look into Lakewood church's policies, they don't actually allow Bibles um, anywhere near uh, a thousand yards of Joel Osteen. And so this one can't be true because uh, the article claims that the woman pulled out a Bible and then Osteen just, you know, slapped her across the face. And it's impossible because his security is very good at making sure that uh, he's, he never has a Bible near him. So again, yeah, a little research goes a long yeah. way yeah. into uh, into debunking these kind of dangerous uh, fake news stories like this. Absolutely. Well, those are some great tips. I mean, it's good to know, get into the mind of the actual creators here of the Babylon Bee so that we can you know, get into your mind and understand how we can take steps to keep ourselves safe. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, this no, um, uh, seriousness, uh, if I could talk, um, <laughs> the, the, the importance of this is that we're, we're seeing an epidemic now of like conservatives in particular on the, the big media platform giants like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube being, um, you know, suspended routinely by mistakes and uh, things yeah. of that nature. And so whether they're individually, like I personally don't buy into the, like they're running around always pressing the button on conservatives. But what I do yeah. think is happening is they've set up these algorithms with their own sensibilities as to what's offensive. And because most of them lean left, you know, a lot of the things on the other side of the aisle, the right get caught in all their filters. So that's kind of my personal theory on it. But what's your guys sort of uh, take on, on the seriousness of it? You know, we've been joking, but it, there is a threat there of deplatforming. Yeah, we've experienced it firsthand. We had we had messages from Facebook threatening uh, deplatforming and demonetization and and uh, and squashing all of our posts, you know, because we were sharing too much fake news. And that came about because we shared an article that said that uh, CNN purchased a giant washing machine <laughs> to spin to spin the news in, you know, and it's. Yeah, you know, we couldn't believe our eyes. You know, like <laughs> it was a I washing some... machine on the on the feature image, which was hilarious, but so obviously fake. And I still have yet to find a single person who was actually, you know, fooled fake. by this <laughs> article. Like, I get that some some satire is a lot drier, and it goes into right. that territory. Oh, is that real? Oh no, it's fake. You know. Yeah. And that one, like, I don't. <laughs> I, it's a dumb joke that like nobody would possibly uh, take seriously. So. I mean, we've seen firsthand that kind of stuff. And I think you're right. I, you know, I don't think it's somebody at Facebook going, you know, well, we need to squash the conservative jokes today, you know, and they, <laughs> they crack their knuckles and get to work. You know, I think it's I think it's the fact that we're doing satire that is targeting the left that you know, this kind of satire that other people weren't doing in the past, you know, and they don't really have the tools to deal with it. You know, the algorithm just detects it and says, Oh, this is this is fake. You know, <laughs> they don't yeah. know, they don't know what to do when they're the target of the joke. And and uh, and you're right. It's probably an automated thing. But yeah. Yeah. So we definitely have seen those kinds of problems in the past. And it, it's concerning to us, especially when a site like Snopes uh, sets themselves up and says we are the fact checker for the right. Internet. Now they're this authoritative mouthpiece. And if they say we're fake news, you know, then then we are, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's concerning to us. Yeah, and that has been, you know, among a lot of people on the left. I mean, Politifact and 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 sites like that have set themselves up, as you said, as the arbiters of truth. And right. um, which the Politifact one always makes me laugh. I don't think you guys have been targeted by them yet, but um, they always make me laugh because everything is half true. Or you know, when when they say something's mostly false, I automatically know it was true, and they just didn't like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so so it is. You know, it is actually good to use discernment, not rely on any site like that that's trying exactly. to tell you what's real and what's fake. Just use common sense, use your actual brain. And as you were saying while we were joking, like research stuff. Um, and I said, because people are now, I mean, they're giving tools now like, hey, report sites. I got a warning today, actually. I went to the Daily Wire to read one of their stories and I got a pop-up warning. I'd never seen this one before. My my It was on my mobile phone and it turned red and it said, hey, warning, this site is, uh, actually, I want to get the actual thing here real quick if i could find my uh 
profile where I tweeted. Here it is. It says, it says deceptive website warning. It's a big red screen. It said this website may try to kick, uh, trick you into doing something dangerous like installing software or disclosing personal or fun. This is the Daily Wire. They want me to watch <laughs> Ben Shapiro talk a hundred words a second. Um, oh man! So anyway, and then I, you know, clicked on more information, and it was just they said that people can report these sites as deceptive. So I think what happens is you get, you know, political opponents abusing that and just pressing the button. Uh, have yeah. you seen that one? I hadn't seen that one before. The deceptive warning. I I have seen that pop up on other sites before. I'm trying to remember which one, but I did see something like that where it was either Daily Wire, one of those. And yeah, I don't know, maybe somebody reported it or, you know, I don't know. But the mistakes always do seem to happen uh, in one direction. And that always <laughs> doesn't make you wonder. <laughs> right. All right. Well, you guys, I know you've set up a, um, a a way to maybe partially combat that in case you were to get the platform. You guys have a subscription option. So um, right. why don't I, since you were kind enough to come on and speak with us, why don't you go ahead and uh, throw out the uh, the subscription option where if you love the Babylon Bee, which everyone I know does, um, you can support them and help make sure that they're not deplatformed by these media giants. Yeah, I'm really good at uh, hawking my wares. So <laughs> if you want to go to if you want to go to babylonb.com/plans, we have monthly subscription options, annual subscription options, and we mo there's some benefits like being ad free and uh, you get longer podcasts and all that stuff. But the main thing we we try to present to people is just the fact that by uh, having a strong base of subscribers, we can break free from social media platforms and the demands they put on the kind of uh, content that we have. So to be you know, more independent is really good for us. And we'd love to be able to just, <laughs> you know, really not rely on traffic from social media social if we media. could help it. Awesome. Well, Kyle Mann, editor in chief of the Babylon Bee, keep up the great work. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your uh, day with us here on faithwire.com. And uh, again, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot.